Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of, the, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and he laid down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as, out, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of God for the people of God. So in our scripture today, we find the story of the calling of Samuel as a prophet of God. Samuel was a man that was given to God as a child. His parents gave him over to the temple as a sign of faithfulness for allowing his birth. His mother Leah had been barren and praying for the Lord for a child. And he blessed her with Samuel, whose name means the Lord hears. So as a boy, he served alongside Eli and he found favor with the Lord because of his faithful work in the temple. And our scripture today is where he is called to become a prophet by God. And while many of us have a calling that we've been given by the Lord, there are very few that can say that they're being called to be a prophet. Perhaps the story of Samuel's call is one that you have heard many times in your life. Perhaps it's one that has lost its meaning to you. Well, what do I mean by that? Do you have a storyteller in your family? Most of us do. The person that remembers all the little funny things or the serious things that have happened to each person in the family. They love to have the people gather around them and to tell the stories about their family. And so for me growing up, that was my mother. She has a remarkable, remarkable ability to remember the things and the stories that she had heard growing up. Now, for my family, I am that person now. I have all these little anecdotes about my children and the things that they've done. And I have all sorts of stories about my life and the lives of our family. And I love to tell them to anyone, especially to my children. Now, I know that they have heard them before. And I know that one day, they're going to stop wanting to hear those stories. One day, I'm sure they'll come to me and say, Oh, Dad, not again. Don't tell that story again. I've heard it so many times. See, when you hear something over and over again, it becomes routine, and it starts to lose its meaning. And this can be the case for us that have grown up in the church. Now, I want you to think of it this way. When was the last time you heard the story of David and Goliath, and you really stopped to think about how huge Goliath was? Or, when was the last time you marveled how David was able to fall, to fell him with just a simple sling and a stone? Or has it become a story that you've heard so many times that it's lost its meaning to you? See, sometimes we feel like we've heard it all before, and we begin to tune out the message that God has intended for us. And this is the case of the story of Samuel and how he became a prophet for the Lord. 
you probably thought to yourself today, as soon as I began to read that scripture, well, here comes a sermon about how we are all called for the Lord. Maybe you thought, not again. I've heard this all before. Maybe you were filled with dread. Because you've been praying about something, asking the Lord if you should move forward, and this might be the moment where you feel that he is telling you, yes, it's time to move forward. However, I want us to try to think about the story of Samuel in a little bit deeper level. So in the scripture, we're told that in this time, God was not speaking much. So... It wasn't just that God was not speaking much, but the people were not listening either. I often talk about prayer as being a two-way communication. It is our responsibility to not only ask of God, but to also listen for God's response. And you know, I've met many people that have described the call that God has put onto their lives, but I do not know one person that has ever said to me, I heard the voice of God, and he told me to do this, whatever it may be. However, I have, the ones that I have met and discussed about the way that God calls them, have almost a universal agreeance that it's something that you feel, something that you feel deep down inside your soul. It's something that comes up in your life over and over and over again. Try as hard as you might to run the other way from it. Somehow, some way, that call always returns to your life. And for a lot of us, we have the same problem that Samuel did. We hear our call, and we think it must be something else. God calls to us, and we think, oh, that must be Eli calling to me. Oh, that must be something else calling to me. Because there's no way that God would want this from me. It has to be that voice of Eli in our lives. And I know for some people, even feeling that call is not enough for them to move forward. There are some that are among the most devout of Christians that will say, unless God calls me by name, I will not go. So then how does God call all of us, because he does call each and every one of us. What is the concrete thing that we can point to and say, okay, Lord, I know that you're speaking to me. Well, that is the word of God. That is what the living Bible is all about. These are concrete things that God calls all his people to. And here are just a few that we would all do well to remember. One, love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Two, feed my sheep. Three, love one another as I have loved you. And four, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now you see, these are just a few things that we can point to as concrete ways that God speaks to all of us. But we have to be willing to listen to those things that he has called us to. Now, brothers and sisters, I would like to tell you something that falls under category number four. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And it's also a great example of God speaking to someone and them not listening. A few weeks ago, I was praying in the morning, as I try to do each and every day before I began working on my sermon. And one of the things that I prayed for that day was that God would bring someone into my life that needed him and needed me. That God would allow me to be his hands and feet and to do his work in this world. Now, later on that day, I happened to need to go to the post office. So I drove into town, and I realized that I had chosen to go to the post office at 1225. 
Now, if you don't know, the post office closes at 12.30 and reopens at 1.30 each day so that the postal workers can have their lunch. And it dawned on me that I had just five minutes to spare, and I really needed to hustle to get into the post office and get the label filled out to get that package out before the post office workers went on lunch so that I didn't have to turn around and drive back up to the hill, wait till 1.30, and then turn around and drive back into town to make sure that that package got out that day. So as I pulled into the parking lot, I saw someone that I knew. And I haven't seen them for quite some time. And I really should have gone over to them and talked to them to make sure that they're doing all right through everything that's gone on this year. However, I let my busy life get in the way. I thought, oh, well, they look pretty busy. And they probably won't even remember me anyways. I'm just going to leave them alone. Besides, i got to get into the post office. They're going to close in five minutes. So I went in and I got my package out on time before they closed. And then I got back into my car. And I started it up. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. You idiot, I thought. Didn't you pray this morning for God to put someone into your path so that you could be a witness for him? Do you think that you just missed your chance that God had set you up for today? The answer was yes. And I cannot tell you the amount of shame that I felt in that moment. And I immediately began to pray for forgiveness and to ask for another opportunity to come. And I hope that I do a better job of listening the next time that it does. You see, it's easy for us to get wrapped up in the little things of our lives it's easy for us to forget the things that God is calling us to do when we are so busy. We forget that his word holds concrete examples of how we are to be living. So we must do our utmost to ensure that we are listening for God's call and that we are brave enough and smart enough to act when we hear it. So my challenges for you this week are to think about how is God calling you in your life? What are some steps that you need to do to fulfill that call? And I want you to consider what is one thing the Bible says to you that you must make sure you're doing as part of your life. Amen.